Good morning. It's actually 2.30, but I'm going to do my hair and then my mirror. Hello. Who's on? Say hi. I'll just wait for a minute or so. I never wait, though. As soon as I see someone come on, I'm on. I'm on it. Okay, hey guys. So, I'm going to talk about goals today. It's kind of in my wheelhouse right now because I've set some pretty big ones in my lifetime. And I've set some pretty big ones recently. So why do we set goals? I gotta turn my AC back on or else I'm gonna be sweating it out. So why do we set goals? I can't, oh hey Jamie, those little dots are so small. And I don't have my glasses on but I recognize that profile picture. Welcome. All right, so here's the deal. We go through these phases of life where there's loss, right? And then there's growth, and then there's, we're just constantly, just like a garden, it dies for a certain season, and then you till it, and then you grow again. So there's seasons to our life, and goals are a huge part of each season for me, um, because it gets you out of bed, and it helps you not focus and be self self-absorbed, and just focus on you and what's not going right or whatever. So goals get me out of bed. And obviously if I have goals around being a good mom, that's even better, right? So for me, I set goals around personal things that I can step into. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Michael. Um, and then I also set business goals that kick my butt. Like I haven't reached them before. And so that's a good goal for me to set. So what happens, because I'm talking to a few of my um, clients that are taking on their health right now, and I am constantly telling them, watch out for setting goals. Like it's fantastic to do and it's necessary. And at the same time, you need to be aware that you personally have not allowed yourself to reach this goal before. And so especially around weight release, and so then you start going into, who can I call who's going to totally kill off the dream of my goal? I don't know why we do it, but we do. We attract all those conversations into our space. Who's going to tell me that I'm not going to do this? <laughs> some of them are in our family. Some of them are friends. Some of them are people that we just attracted off the street that says something to us that makes us question ourselves. Um, but that's a choice. We don't have to do that. Um, we can choose to rock that goal out and set up massive accountability around that goal. So that when you do have those moments of relapse into your comfortableness, your comfort zone, because going to the goal is outside of your comfort zone, um, you go to the group and say, hey, I'm having a fleeting moment of questioning myself if I can do this. And I just wanted to let you know that. And those friends, a lot of them are watching this video right now. Those friends will say, oh, hell no. Hey, Richard, or Richmond, how awesome. Hey, Alexis, um, some old friends are coming on. Not that they're old physically, but old school friends of mine. So keep going. Have your group. You have to have a cheer squad. You have to have a cheer squad. Let me repeat. <laughs> this is massive because this cheer squad actually believes that you're going to get the goal. Listen, your pride is probably your worst enemy. Your pride and your negative self-talk 
is the thing that is talking you out of the goal because you've never gotten it before. So what the hell do you think you're doing? That's, that's your pride because it doesn't want to be embarrassed, right? So I talk to a lot of women about weight release. Hey, we're all on this journey for the rest of our lives. We get to work on our health, our weight, our hormones constantly. So this isn't ever going away. So get over your pride. Well, I've started a lot of programs and haven't finished them. And no, any of my cleansers right now don't think that I'm talking about you. But we all have these we all have this going on in our heads. I've already announced that I tried this product and it didn't work and all that. Guess why it didn't work? Because of your pride and you didn't have a cheer squad. You didn't have a squad that was like, get off your butt and pull that piece of pie out of your mouth and let's get this show on the road, okay? Hey Joyce. Thanks for coming on guys. Thanks for the love. I love hearts. I want to see as many hearts as I can see in one live. Ready? Go. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I feel loved. Now I can function in the world, Jamie and everyone. Now I'm a winner. Okay, but actually... <laughs> That's fun. I've seen um, uh, live gurus get like 80,000 of these things. And I'm just like, how did I do that? So I just did it. See, I got a goal. Woo! Anyway, keep going. Stop letting your stinking thinking get in the way. Stop letting your negative self-talk control your life. And keep going. If you don't think I don't have a victim story, I could sit in a shit pile as big as Texas if I wanted to. Sorry if you're offended by cussing. Sometimes that just comes out of my heart. Um, if I wanted to sit in a victim story, I might as well say goodbye to every goal in life I have. Because the enemy of your mind loves when you choose victim. Loves when you choose victim. Hey, Lisa. So if you're going to choose victim, say goodbye to every dream and goal you've ever had. Because you're more committed to that victim story than you are to being an overcomer, a survivor, a changed person. So... I know this is kind of harsh today, and I am looking at myself in the mirror as I'm saying all of this. So know that everything I say is something I that's for myself. And I don't know if this is recording well or not, because it seems very stunted. Anyway, get a cheer squad. Tell them what your goals are. It's going to make you crap your pants. You're going to freak out. The next day you're going to question yourself. The day after that, you're going to have some really sad story come into your life that's going to take up your time. And you possibly will choose into that. Or the next day you're going to go into all the stories and all the failures in your life of how you haven't achieved the goals that you've set. And then the next day, are you kidding me right now? Let's not go into day one, two, or three. Then the next day you're going to have PMS and you're going to go into massive emotions about how this is not ever going to work. So um, you haven't even talked to anyone yet and this is all the, the negativity that's come up after you've set a goal. So when you set a goal, get a cheer squad set up before you even announce the goal. And then write in your journal or write stuff all over your mirror that says, I am not going to settle for the crap that comes up in my head, for the old victim stories, for the old things that tear me down and make me less than. 
and then get to work. Get to work. You have a tribe in your life that is waiting for you to show up, to show up big. You're waiting. They're waiting for you to support them and love on them and help them. And at the same time, you are not their savior. If there's anything I've learned in the last year, it is my love will never save a man. And I mean a man, woman, a human. I really did believe it did. I really believed it could. And it about ruined me. I can't save anyone. So, pull up your big girl britches, because most of my friends are girls. So, if there's any guys listening, pull up your big girl britches and get moving. Because if you're so into yourself and into your victim story, the world's not going to change very fast. So, I love you guys and have an amazing day. And know that I've set goals that make me lose sleep sometimes. Well, they don't make me. I choose for them to affect me. Um, and I have two boys watching me. So it's a high pressure deal here. And or I could see it as they are so excited to cheer me on. And they're so proud of me. So. Love you guys. Have a blessed day. And thank you so much for the heart emojis.